Okay, so this is the beginning of the Chin tutorial. Chin is a character just like Kim that you probably saw a lot of just recently at Evo 2013 and I wanted to make sure that people understand what's going on because this is a character that a lot of people don't have quite have a full knowledge of and I must admit that before a few days ago I didn't either. But after watching Evo a little bit more, after doing some more practice, I'm ready to teach you the ways of how to get drunk. <laughs> Alright, so I'll start just like um, with all the other characters with the normals, although I must warn you, Chin is one of the more complicated characters in the game moveset-wise. If you are a beginner, I'm going to suggest against using Chin just for the moment, okay? But, if you have your heart set on him, the next thing you'll want to know is that a lot of his moves sort of flow into one another, and so uh, trying to keep my traditional format of normals, specials, supers will be a little bit tougher with Chin. I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit to try to keep up. Alright, so standing normals. His standing A, he doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to go anywhere, right? Well, it still has good proximity guard range anyway. It still makes you guard from half screen. Um, honestly, this is one of the good ones as far as it actually works on most characters crouching. Um, him being so short helps with that. But uh, he doesn't have a close light punch. This is a good anti-air, and you can also use it multiple times in strings. And it chains into lots of his other options. Okay. So, um, let's see, standing hard punch. This is a really good normal. You'll notice it moves him forward. The more you use it, the closer you get. Using uh, a couple of other techniques, which I will go over, you can really, 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 really take advantage of this normal for things like frame advantage, pressure, and anti-air as well. It has a pretty good angle on it, and it's also really fast on startup, so you can use this as an anti-air instead of using standing jab, but he has plenty of other anti-airs that I'll get to in a moment. He does have a close hard punch, comes out relatively fast, and uh, it's cancelable. Uh, the far hard punch is also cancelable. The hard punch is going to be one of the normals that you're going to use most of the time. Okay, his standing light kick isn't that great. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of reach. What you can use it for is more close range shenanigans. Um, you don't really see it a whole lot in upper level play, but this is a style thing that you could try to incorporate yourself. He does not have a close light kick. And it is cancelable though. Okay. Next he has the standing hard kick, okay? Now, the standing hard kick is his second longest reaching normal, okay? It reaches from about a quarter of the screen away. It's gonna depend, of course, on what opponent you're fighting. But it does reach pretty far, okay? Now he does have one normal that actually reaches farther than that on the ground, and that is actually the standing CD. Let me find a range where this whiffs. Whiff? Got it. So standing CD reaches a little bit further than standing D. Uh, by the way, just to backtrack a little bit, standing D is not cancelable, okay? Honestly, his hard kicks are some of his only non-cancelable moves. Almost all of his normals are going to be cancelable near the end of the time. Okay. Okay. The hard kick does have one other nice thing. It can transition into a stance. If you press a standing hard kick and you hold that hard kick, he goes into his, his, uh, his kick stance, and I will talk about his stances as we proceed. It's actually really close. Okay. Now, standing CD, just like every other standing CD in the game, is cancelable um, on contact. It's also with cancelable. Okay. Now, this does reach really far. When you consider, like, how slow his walk and his run speed are, um, you'll realize that have your longest range normal is something that you're going to want to use a lot. That's why you'll see a lot of upper level chin players using standing C and standing CD. These normals are really good at protecting yourself from hops, but also advancing on the ground. Go, 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 let's go! Alright. Now, um, after standing normals, next we have crouching normals, and these are, these are quite a mixed bag, okay? His crouching A, just like his standing A, has a lot of variation in what you can do with it. It is also cancelable. Okay. Um, now his crouching B, this is one of the more unique crouching Bs in the game. I want you to notice something here. I'm going to push him to the corner. If you do a crouching B, notice that Chin moves forward a little bit when he does the crouching B. Try to look at right now where Chin is in the neutral animation. He's waving around. Notice he's just kind of sort of barely but not quite reaching Kenso's hand. Normally when you hit a button and they block it, you get pushed away. There's pushback whenever things get blocked, right? Well, in Chin's case... Check this, just barely touches. Crouching B, just barely touches. Crouching B, just barely touches. Crouching B, 
Just, you see what I'm saying? His crouching B, because of the forward movement on it, it actually doesn't lose any spacing. Unless you do it from point blank. If you do it from point blank, it has a certain amount of pushback on it, but if you keep doing it, you are at the same range every single time you do it, okay? Now this forward movement is useful because Chin gets more attacks than most characters in the game. Most characters only get three attacks to confirm a combo. One, two, three, and then if those three hit, go into a special. Some characters even have four, like Karate, like Kim, but Chin can do five, and he can do even more than five, depending. Like he can, and plus, like at this range where he's five away, he does still have normals that reach that far. Okay? So Chin, when he's in your face, because of his crouching A, his crouching B, his standing A, because of the forward movement in particular on the crouching B, he can stay in your face longer than most characters, and he has excellent ability to hit confirm because of that, and it's what makes him really, really dangerous in the close range. You need to utilize the forward movement on crouching B in your mix-ups in order to be a super effective Chin. Okay. His crouching C, you don't see a whole lot of. Um, honestly, though, it does just as much damage as his standing close hard punch. So, there's really no reason not to use it a whole lot. Um, it is cancelable. Um, if, say, there's a particular combo or motion that requires you hit a close hard punch, but you keep getting crouching, hey, as long as it hits, that'll work just fine. Use whichever is more comfortable for you. Okay. Um, but crouching C and close C are often interchangeable. The only difference would be the speed of close C. Um, let's see. Crouching hard kick. Oh, and by the way, it is also cancelable. And his crouching B is cancelable as well. So three of his four crouching buttons are cancelable. Now, his crouching hard kick is not cancelable. And it's also really, really bad and slow. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean you should never use it. I can think of a few situations where they really just won't expect the low. Like at this range where crouching B doesn't reach, if you really want a low, crouching D will do the trick. I just really hope it doesn't get blocked. Because notice how much earlier Kenso jumps before you recover. There's really nothing you can do about that. Um, this is one of the, the worst crouching hard kicks in the game as far as on block. It's up there with the Ori's. If you block this from Chin, if, he, if you see a Chin player do this and you block it, there's a almost 100% chance that you can absolutely punish it, no matter what spacing you block it at. Even if he does it at the, the absolute very tip of the kick, there's a good chance you have the ability to run up and punish the Chin player, or at the very least do a reversal super or something like that. I would say, if you are the Chin player, utilize Crouching D sparingly at this particular range, which is, by the way, about five jabs away. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Gotta have some juice. Alright. So next. Jumping normals. Okay. His jumping light punch actually has an upward angle on it. Okay? Players of Street Fighter will recognize the angle... Might compare it to, say, Sakura's jumping medium punch. Um, this is a very, very good air-to-air. -air, but quite honestly, his jumping CD does so much work. <laughs> it's one of the normals you're going to use most of the time. I'll get to CD in a second. But if you need another air-to-air... Besides jumping, uh, let's see, besides jumping hard kick and jumping CD, if you want another one, jumping A will do the trick. Also, jumping A does not cross up, but jumping hard punch crosses up. In fact, I got the back turn. Jumping hard punch crosses up. Jumping light kick crosses up. Jumping hard kick crosses up, and jumping CD can cross up as well. Just in case you've never seen this before, if you if somebody blocks your attack and they turn around but you still land in front of them, that was a cross up and they did have to block it that way and they do have to switch their block around to go the correct direction again. It can be very, this is one of the best ways to cross someone up in this game. If you can get them to just get that back turn on block, now they have to switch their block again when you land. But, but the point is, four of his five jumping normals do cross up. So he does have a pretty good cross-up game, especially if you do, it gets a point-blank range, do a jab, and then a light kick, and then full jump. This probably won't work on every character in the game, so experiment, but this is a really simple way to catch someone with a cross-up with Shin. Woo! Alright. Let's 
Let's see. Um, his jumping light kick has a good downward angle on it. If you are going to hyper hop in and you want a downward angle attack, uh, jumping light kick will suffice. But again, jumping CD does a lot of the work in this sense. Jumping CD is probably overall his best jumping attack. But jumping light kick and jumping hard punch... Excuse me. I'm choking up the juice. Um, jumping light kick and jumping hard punch are going to be his best jump ins overall for air to ground. For air to air, we have jumping A, jumping D, and jumping, hard, uh, jumping CD. But jumping CD more or less works in all cases. The hitbox on jumping CD is just a little bit ridiculous. Let's see here. It connects over there. I really don't have to show you much else. It connects over there. <laughs> it's like a black hole just sucking you in. It's weird. But it, this is one of the better jumping CDs in the game range-wise. It's very deceptive for that reason. You want to make sure you utilize jump CD liberally to scare them from your air game so that they'll stay on the ground and they'll crouch. Once they start crouching, either use a jump CD late to get pressure or use a jump C to get in. Light kick will also work as well. Okay. So now we get to get into the chin stuff, okay? Command moves. He has three command normals which are listed here. The rest are stuff that are within the stances that I'm gonna get into, okay? First, I wanna talk about the punch stance. Okay, let me get rid of the display here. If you hit down down and hit a punch button, whoo, he sort of crouches and touches the ground there, okay? This is a great way to avoid things, okay? Number one. Ah, oh, crap. Missed it. Whoop. You can duck under a lot of projectiles in the game with this. So if projectiles are, you know, sort of messing with your spacing, your zoning, if you just really want to avoid them, just go... Whoop. Just crouch under them. That's something that you can do with the down-down punch stance. Now, the stance comes with it. It comes with a, its, its own unique set of properties. So first and foremost... Inputting any direction that isn't up is not red. Left, right, the downward directions, they don't do anything while you're in the stance. If you input an upward direction, up, up, left, up, right, you leave the stance immediately. So you can press any upward direction to leave it quicker. Okay, that's, one, that's another thing. Now, while you are in the punch stance, you can input special moves that are not the drink or the twist super. <laughs> okay, excuse me. While you are in the punch stance, you can input special moves, one more time, that is these top three. Excuse me, there's four. <laughs> these top three specials, Sui Ho, which is the parry, quarterback punch, which is the slap, down forward light kick, which is that upwards looking kick, and the last one, which is the roll. Kaiten Teki Kutotsuken. That's this. While you are in the actual punch stance, you can do these specials. Okay. Those are more of the choices that you have while you're in the stance. Now, while you are in the stance, there is a unique move that you can do in the stance. And this one is listed here as Getsuga Soshu. Notice it says Zaben <laughs> Alright, so Japanese words, I'm not going to bother pronouncing it. If you are in the punch stance and you hit any punch button while you're in the stance, you get this weird looking special move thingy. This connects twice, and what this does is it is cancelable, okay? So, you can cancel this into special moves. The second, the, the second time you punch, when you do this, you can cancel it into special moves. So it's a super. You can't cancel it to a Neomax, it looks like. But you can still cancel it into a super. You can cancel it into this. Looks like you can't cancel it into drink, though. Drinking is reverse DP like punch. You cannot cancel this into a drink. But you can cancel into those four special moves and into a super. Okay. 
These four special moves are very, very important because they're going to go all the way around his game plan. The roll on the bottom, the suiho, which is the parry, the chogeki, which is the slap, and the niki kyaku, which is the upwards kick. This thing. Okay? Now, when you do this punch from the punch stance, you can cancel it into another stance. Because you can cancel it into a stance, you can create true block strength, okay? Now, one guard jump is a training option that I hope you're familiar with. When you do one guard jump, you tap them, and then the dummy immediately starts holding up the moment they block one thing, okay? Set them to crouch one guard jump just for greater accuracy. As soon as they block one attack, they'll start to jump. Now, if you time your attacks right, and someone tries to jump in the middle of them, you can hit them during the pre-jump frames, but my point is, if someone is holding up but they're in block stun, you will continue the string as long as they are truly in block stun. And the reason I want you to know this is because you can chain these into each other and create a true situation where they have to block them all. You can force them into a situation where they need to block those, and because of that, you have a great ability to play with your opponent's reactions. Depending on the timing of this punch move, it can almost mix up on by itself. It's a question of how early you do it and how late you do it. If you do it as early as possible, you absolutely can force them to block them all. And if you want to cancel the punch move into a stance, simply cancel it into down down punch. Look at my input here. Okay. Down, down, punch enters the stance, punch goes into the stance, and then you cancel into down, down, punch, and you can repeat the simple input over and over. Okay. Whew. Now, this punch special move that you have within the punch stance has an EX version, and that EX version has three hits on it. Now, I want you to notice that when you do do this punch stance special move, Okay? It actually is negative. You, your, your opponent recovers before you do. Okay? So if you just stop and don't do anything else, it's a pretty bad move. Usually you want to use it and either cancel it into itself or into more pressure. Make sure you do something after the down-down punch or you will lose your offensive momentum. But the EX version is very, very positive on block. See, like, notice how I jump first here in this one guard jump situation. The EX version does three hits, and the third hit sucks them in. So as long as they're within a certain range, it'll pull them in and you can do a cool combo. Oops. Oops. Whee! So you can use that EX version, if you don't want to use the punch version because you're not used to canceling it yet, you can use the EX version to gain frame advantage, and it's also a way, from an overhead, he can actually kill you for 5 bars if he uses that. There's probably a handful of other cool combos that, that might use that. You don't really see the EX version of this move a whole lot in high level play, not in my experience, but it's a move that you can start to incorporate with your style if you like to use that frame advantage. Okay. Just keep in mind when you do the EX version. Let's see here. Ah, uh, never mind. I was gonna make a point that was wrong. You can totally cancel the second or the third hit there. <laughs> All right. Now, there's one more thing you can do while in the punch stance. Okay, and it's listed. Let's see. It's listed right underneath the punch special move in the special move list. It says Hogeki. Back or forward plus hard punch. If you're in the punch stance and you input back or forward plus hard punch, you get this little ugh. What that is, is a normal throw, okay? This is exactly the same as a normal throw. Chin's normal throw. Woo! He just does that kung fu little push thing. Okay? Now, when you down, down punch, forward punch, you get the exact same thing. Now, I'm not exactly certain if they start up in the same amount of frames, but what you need to know is it's a throw, okay? And the reason this is important is because if you catch your opponent blocking for too long... You, 
can absolutely... Oh, let's, let's, let me set the dummy and get this right here. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, perfect. Aw. Oh. If you wait there long enough, if you can really, really scare them into blocking for a long time off of his various stance options, then you can absolutely get throws out of his stances. Okay? It should be said that this punch special move you can do in the other stance as well, in his kick stance. And I'll get to that a little bit more in a moment. So if you can get them to block for a long time because you have a good, interesting offense that's really unpredictable, then if you are in a stance, you absolutely can get that throw. And in Chin's case, he gets a combo in the corner, just like Benomaru and just like Kenso, and I'll go over those throw corner combos in a little bit. Okay. But that is the punch stance in a nutshell. It's not quite as complicated as it seems, but you'll, as you play, you'll gain more experience with it. Now, that's the punch stance. What about the kick stance? Hitting down, down, and a kick, either kick, doesn't matter. Same with the punch stance, either punch, doesn't matter. Gives you this little wah, kung fu stance. All right. The first thing I want to say about this stance is while you're in it, if you press both kicks, you leave it. All you have to do is press both kicks. Now, some more observant or maybe maybe those people who are learning ahead, thinking ahead, will might say, can you enter and leave the stance instantly? Yes. If you press down, down, and both kicks, you leave the stance instantaneously. And this is how those people are able to make those weird combos. Okay? For example, you could take close hard punch, go into the kick stance and cancel it immediately with down, down, both kicks. And then if you hit hard punch again quickly enough, that'll combo. Just combo a hard punch to a hard punch. It's really, really nasty damage, and if you can get used to it, this is where his best combo starters are going to come from. It's not just combos, either. Okay? If you, if you utilize this kick stance cancel properly, you can absolutely use... Let's see here. You can do pressure that feels like it's never-ending. It's not actually never-ending. A good player knows where the holes are. The idea is, if you have really good execution, you can absolutely take advantage of this, and a lot of your normals which don't have frame advantage normally, you can create frame advantage by actually using the stance cancel. Okay? The stance cancel is going to become something that you're going to practice more and more as you get to intermediate and advanced levels of play, and I just you need to know this if you want to do some of his harder combos. And I believe I mentioned this when I was talking about the normal, but if you hold hard kick when you just poke with it, you do enter the stance as well. Now, when you are in this stance, I'll get to the hop in a second, your normals sort of switch around, okay? Your punches actually force you to leave the stance, okay? Now, if you're just walking around and you hit standing light punch, it looks like this, right? If you're in the stance and you hit standing light punch, it's exactly the same. Don't worry about it. You also leave the stance when you press light punch. However, if you are in this stance and you hit hard punch, it's exactly the same as your close hard punch. Here's what close hard punch looks like. If you're in the stance and you hit hard punch, you get the same normal. But, when you're not in that stance, you have a different far hard punch. So, you can actually do this as a poke string. You can do a close hard punch into down down hard kick for the stance. And if you hit that next hard punch really, really quickly, it'll reach really far. And that is actually a true block string that your opponent cannot avoid both of, assuming you hit them fast enough. Woo! Okay, let's see here. Now, if you hit light kick while you're in this stance, it becomes equivalent to the down forward light kick special move. I'm going to get to it more in a second. But the third move on this list, the Niki Kyaku, okay, that's down forward and light kick. It counts as a special move because you can EX it by hitting both kicks. But if you're in this stance and you just hit light kick by itself, it gives you that special move. And it's where a lot of his combo options come from. You're going to be using this kick quite a lot, especially in your corner combos. Let's see. And let's see. Last note. If you hit hard kick while in this stance, 
you stay in the stance, and it looks very similar to his standing hard, hard kick. But I want to point out that it's not exactly the same. While you're in this stance, notice the foot he's standing up. He's standing up on his back foot, and then he winds up, but he keeps, he stays on the same foot, and he does this hard kick. But I want to point out that this is not the same as the hard kick outside of the stance. The hard kick outside of the stance has more range. So from this range, the hard kick would work. But in the stance, it doesn't. Okay? So you might say, well, it's not good as a poke, well, why would I use it? And the reason is... The reason is... The reason is, is because it does more damage than his hard punch, okay? So let's take a, a basic combo, for example. Hard punch, down, down, kick, hard punch. This isn't super basic, but this is a combo you're going to see a little bit more of, or at least a string you're going to see more of. If you do the hard kick, it's actually going to do more damage. But the issue is, this hard kick is actually not cancelable. Okay? You cannot cancel this into a... <laughs> that was on a cancel. You cannot cancel this into a super can't cancel it to a drink, can't cancel it to Neomax, can't cancel it to a stance, there's really nothing that you can do off of it. But what you can use it for, that it is functional for, is it is a really really good confirm into HD because it's going to give you more damage than hard punch hard punch. We'll get into HD when I get there, it'll be way at the end. Okay. Let's see here. Now, while you are in the kick stance, your movement changes. Okay? If you are in the kick stance and you hit a downward direction, you enter the punch stance. <laughs> so hit down, and you go from the kick stance to the punch stance. If you hit an upward direction, your jumps are still the same as normal. Okay? You can still hop, and you can still jump. But keep in mind that because you have to hit down, to hyper hop or super jump, you cannot hyper jump, you cannot hyper hop, and you cannot super jump out of the stance because you would have to hit down. So what would happen is you would end up leaving the stance, you would go into the punch stance, then you would leave the punch stance and you would just do a normal jump. So you keep in mind you cannot hyper hop or super jump, but you can hop and you can full jump out of the stance. Those jumps are not affected. If you hit left or right, you get this little hop, okay? And with this hop you can move forward. You can try to go for the command grab out of the stance. Or, you can try to edit your spacing so that you're in a better spot to hit with the normals. It should be said though that when you are in this stance, you still have access to your special moves as well. Okay, so while you're in the kick stance, you have a bit more freedom than when you're in the punch stance. You do see the kick stance more often than the punch stance. The punch stance is more of a close range tool for mix-ups and for trickery. And the kick stance is more of an annoying tool. Like you can annoy your opponent by moving around like this, but then you can switch back to a regular stance or you can just hit a jab. Like there's, there's lots of ways that you can use the kick stance in the neutral game to be sort of annoying. Um, but just annoying, like it's never ever super effective. Usually you want to be out of a stance when you're just playing in the neutral game. But, of course, there are exceptions and you have the ability to be tricky with the stances and try to, you know, mess with, mess with their view of how you're moving. You know, if you run up and then you punch stance and then all of a sudden, if you run up and all of a sudden you kick stance and then you punch stance and then you hit the kick, you know. Let's see here. You know, that might be trickier than just running forward and doing a hyper jump. So, try to come up with your own style for how you like to move. The stances can be used to really confuse your opponent. Let's see. Um, there's one more thing about the kick stance you need to know. Let's see here. Thank goodness for Turbo. Alright. <laughs> I 
Well, I hope you get you guys are getting the point I'm trying to get across. There's actually a period. There's a very, very small moment of time during these hops where you are actually low invincible and you can go over some of the crouching normals in the game, particularly crouching light kicks and crouching hard kicks, okay? This might be easier to show you with this. Okay, so if you think that your opponent is going to be crouching, attacking, especially in the close range, you could hop over it and then really get something depending on your setup. It's another interesting thing that Shin has access to. Okay, so the punch stance and the kick stance are listed in the command normals, and now we have the Uran Kochu, which is down forward hard kick, the overhead of death. Okay. Chin is interesting in that if he lands this overhead, lots of little things happen. But the most important thing is that he enters a modified version of the punch stance. It's not exactly the same as the punch stance. You can still press an upward direction to leave early, okay? If I just hit the ground, and after I hit the ground, I hold up, notice how late he recovers. Okay, let's just go ahead and set one guard jump just so that we have an example here. Okay, if you just like wait a little bit and then hold up, notice how late I jump compared to the Kenso. Now, if you hold up before you get there, you actually recover just a little bit faster. Okay, I actually got that wrong. This is the super slow one. There we go. And this is the faster one. The point is, just like with the regular punch stance, oops, just like with the regular punch stance, you can hit up as you are in the stance to actually leave earlier. Okay. You can also, while you're in this, while you're in this modified version of the punch stance, you can do the punch special, the one two. Okay. You can also do down forward light kick, but for whatever reason, you cannot do the ex version of this while you're here. You can do the ex version from the kick stance, and you can do the ex version from the punch stance, but you cannot do it after an overhead for some reason. Why? I don't know. Who cares? Next point. Okay. You can also do. Nothing, if you really want to, okay? But there are no other actions that work. If you remember, in the punch stance, you can hit left or right and hard punch to get a command throw, right? Well, that doesn't work after the overhead. Okay, why doesn't it work? I don't know. The point is, this is not exactly the same as the punch stance, so understand the differences so you know your options. If your opponent blocks the overhead, what you do need to know, and the most dangerous thing, is that if your opponent has a one frame command grab, they can absolutely guarantee a punish, okay? One frame command grabs will always punish this. So if, you have, if you're Clark, if you're Kenso and you have a bar, if you're Yuri, if you have a one frame command grab, you can punish this overhead. And let me just prove that to you. Because I want to talk about how it can be punished. And then I'll get into how it's more useful. Hey, come on! Okay, so I'm gonna show you pretty much every possible action you can take out of the stance. can't even super. You can't really super out of the stance. The best thing that you can do is you can do the punch special move, or you can try this, or you can try to you can try to jump in time, but there's really not a whole lot of other act actions you can take. So, I'm holding up after the overhead. Punish. Now, I'm going to hit the punch special move as soon as possible. Punish. Let me try to get that a little faster. Punish. Okay, I kind of want to freeze frame that just so you can see that. Notice where in the animation Chin is. 
This punch special move that Chin can do from the punch stance is very fast. It starts up in, I think, four frames. If you're not sure, double check the frame data. I probably should have before I started. This starts up really fast. If your opponent tries to hit a button, any kind, if they try to hit a jab or a hard punch or something, after they block this overhead, your punch special move after the overhead is probably going to win. And remember, you can do combos and block strings off of that punch special. It's a good idea to do the punch special after they block or get hit by your overhead just because you get a combo or a guaranteed block string. But if they have a one frame command grab, they can absolutely punish your overhead every single time that they block it. So be careful and make sure that if they have a one frame command grab, you only use it sparingly. If you're having trouble against Chin players, pick a command grab character that has a one frame command grab and you'll be able to stop this overhead offense. Does he say, hey, fall in? What does he say there? <laughs> okay. Now. Uh, all guard. Now this is this is an overhead. So, in case you're not sure what that means, that means they have to stand up to block this. If they're crouch guarding, this hits. And then you get a combo. Remember that the punch special move is cancelable, so if you land this overhead, you can absolutely go into a small combo, go into a large combo. Chin can absolutely do gigantic damage off of the overhead if you're willing to spend the meter. Okay? And you don't even have to spend any meter to get 300 damage, okay? I'll go into overhead combos a little bit more when I get to the combo section. But on hit, you get whatever you want. So they need to stand block it and they need to try to do something after it's blocked. After it is blocked, you can absolutely play with your opponent with the stances and the punch special as I went over in the previous section. So the overhead is going to be a great way to get your offense started if they're not punishing it every time. But that's not all there is to the overhead. It's not just an overhead that goes into a combo. It's not just something that guarantees block string pressure. It can also be faked. And this is where Chin goes. <laughs> this is where he gets a little crazy. Because, because it is a command normal, just like with lots of characters, you can cancel any normal that you do, almost any normal that you do, into the command normal. Close hard punch, command normal. Crouch hard punch, overhead. Hard kick, overhead. Light punch, overhead. Do a string. Break your guard. Do a string, overhead. Overhead. Punch stance, punch stance, overhead. Punch stance. <laughs> punch stance, punch stance, overhead. Punch stance. See what I'm saying? He can kind of loop this forever, except he can't. If you do this into the overhead, the block stun actually ends before the overhead connects and your opponent can roll out reversal or do other things. This cannot be looped infinitely. However, if your opponent keeps blocking and they don't stop blocking, then yes, do this infinitely. This will probably annoy a lot of your friends until they figure out how to beat it. But you should know that it is beatable. And, but it is something you should go for at a lower level just to see if they understand your character or not. You can fake this though. Because you have so many close range options, and you can cancel any of them into an overhead or an overhead fake. That is where he gets really, really crazy, especially in the corner where you can get a combo off of a normal throw. Okay? To fake the overhead, real simple, just when you do the overhead, hold the kick button. No directional inputs are required. As long as you hold the kick button, you will cancel out of it. One of my favorite mix-ups to do is to do a fake overhead into a real overhead. If they don't hit a button, they're going to get hit by that. You're going to have some great fun there. Let's see. Now, that's all his command normals. That's his stances. You will undoubtedly learn more about them the more you play, the more you practice. It's important that you have good knowledge of his stances if you want to be a really good chin player.
Now, before I move on to specials, I want to talk about his normal throw. His normal throw is really good in the sense that you get a combo if they're in the corner. Okay? It's 100 damage. Uh, let's see. No. No. No, too far. And last but not least. My turbo on? Holy crap. Nope. So, outside of the corner, you don't get any combos off throw. But just like Kenso and Benamaru, if you get offense in the corner and you get that throw, oh boy. You get all sorts of good stuff. This causes a full juggle in the corner, and you have lots of combo opportunities, okay? I'll just show you a really basic one. No, that, not that one, although that's pretty good too. Close hard punch, overhead, reset. Chin is the sort of reset heavy character. A lot of his combos at your option, you can stop, you can finish with hard punch, overhead fake, or hard punch, overhead, or hard punch, stance, hop, into other shenanigans. If you actually land a combo, you can absolutely cancel into stances or into overheads and overhead fakes to keep the pressure going, and it's one of his main strengths. Going back to special moves, we can finally talk about these three here that you're going to be using a lot of in their own way. First is the Suiho, which is the parry. Quarter circle back, kick. Okay, he goes, Woo! Drunken boxing style. He's trying to egg you on. This is a parry. What's a parry? Here's what a parry is. When you do quarter circle back light kick, if your opponent makes contact with the upper part of your body and attacks you with an attack that isn't low, then you hit them. <laughs> okay? Don't miss with it, by the way. Not only do you hit them, but you pop them up in the air, and combos are possible. All you gotta do is time your stuff right. You can get combos if you land the light parry, you knock them into the air. And it should also be said that when you do parry, that attack that you do is cancelable into specials. doesn't combo right there, but you do need to know that it is cancelable. And in the case of the light kick parry, you want to hesitate a little bit and do a light roll and continue your combo from there. Depending on their height, you may need to edit the timing of that light roll, but that's the most common follow-up to a light parry. Now what about the hard kick parry? Let's try it again. If you do a hard kick parry, you sort of just get hit in the face. Why does that happen? Well, because it parries low. Now when you parry low, he does an attack that looks an awful lot like his close hard kick. This is what his close hard kick looks like. However, just like the light parry, it is cancelable. Because it is cancelable, you can create some unique situations. But again, just like with the light parry, the most common follow-up is to go into a light roll and then follow your combo from there. Oh, missed it. This guy's crazy. Alright. So, if you land a parry, you can almost always land a combo. In fact, I'm pretty... Um, you can always land a combo, you just gotta time it right. But the light parry parries high and does 80 damage. You'll often see it counter hit though. Oops, excuse me. Whenever you actually anti-air someone with this parry, 
you're going to see it counter hit a lot, and that's going to cause it to do 100 damage most of the time. If you're not aware, a counter hit does 25% extra damage. So, 25% of 80, 20, 80 plus 20, math lesson over. Alright. Now, well, what about the EX parry? The EX parry isn't active for as long as the light and the hard parry are. However, it does more damage and creates a different setup. Regarding the parries here, the light and the hard parry are active for a little while. Um, like, let's see here. you to notice here, I'm going to try to time the parry early. Notice that even though I timed the parry early, the parry still connects here. Now, it doesn't. it's not always guaranteed to connect here. This is a good way to segue into the next point. When you actually land a parry, that does not necessarily guarantee that the follow-up attack is going to land, okay? As an example, you can even parry a projectile. Okay, and if you do parry a projectile, Obviously, they're nowhere near you to actually take the damage. But, when you think about it, not only can you avoid projectiles with a punch stance, you can also parry them and lose no life. If you actually do it right. There we go. There we go. If you parry something, you don't lose any life. Wow, this, this move has a lot of layers of depth on it. <laughs> Alright, now, the point that I was trying to get at is that with the EX parry, it's not as active for that long. Watch this one more time. I timed that hard kick parry really early. Notice how early I pressed that button, but the parry is still active. Now watch it with EX. No longer parrying. Notice that? I hit it with the same timing. And I get hit there. Why? Well, the reason is because it needs to be timed perfectly. Because it doesn't have that many active frames. However, the trade-off of the few active frames is that it does 199 damage, as opposed to the 40 and the 80 for the hard kick and the light. And it also guarantees a setup. Just like with the light and the hard parry, the last hit of that little flurry is cancelable. So again, you can go into combos. Okay, so once again, you can go into corner carry, once again, you can threaten with overhead, overhead fake, etc. The EX parry parries both high and low, does good damage, and it also guarantees, well, excuse me, it doesn't guarantee, obviously, on a projectile, um, with all parries. There we go. If you, yeah. You EX parry a projectile, pretty much nothing happens. But assuming that their physically that their body physically connects with an EX parry, notice that Kenzo sort of teleports to the ground there. Similar to Elizabeth, if you're familiar with her, this guarantees a follow-up assuming their body is connecting with you. Okay? So you can use the EX parry to be a uh, if you want to parry high and low at the same time, or if you want that damage. Now the parry, because it's good at anti-airing, because it's good at, you know, doing things on wake-up, it's very, very annoying to deal with, okay? And let me just demonstrate how it does work on wake-up, okay? This actually is active on the very, very first frame that it is input. If you input a parry before you get up and you use the buttonhole trick, and they have an attack that is right on top of you on the exact moment you get up, it will still work. And this is true for all versions. So 
hopefully that was enough evidence for you to see. What's going on with the parries is they are active on the very, very first frame. So you can use them without meter as a wake up option if you know if your opponent's gonna go high or low or if you think they're gonna attack in the first place. His parry is a very, very interesting wake up move and it's very useful. But in addition, because it's active so fast, you can use the light and the EX versions, excuse me, to anti air. So I wanna detail as, um, excuse me, <sighs> gather thoughts. If you are fighting against a Chin player, what you need to do is empty jump once in a while. I know, this is sort of anti-KOF. This requires you to play the matchup right. Whenever you're playing against a Chin player, if you're thinking about jumping in, every once in a while, don't attack when you jump in. Because then you'll land, he'll try to parry, but he won't parry anything, and then you can punish the recovery. Parry, oh no. <laughs> you need to start doing stuff like this if you're having trouble fighting against Chin players. Don't let them parry you all the time, so simply empty jump once in a while. If you empty jump and they parry, you can get a full punish, so make sure you utilize that. Similarly, make sure that you don't always attack them every time on wake up. A little slow on that punish, but you understand the point. Once in a while, on knockdowns and on jumps, don't attack. And if he parries, you'll get something nice. And if you think he's scared of parrying, then attack. Now, next on the list, we have the Getsuga Chogeki, which is the slap, the back fist, whatever you want to call it. This is actually surprisingly low in damage. This does 60 damage for either version. Okay, of the light of the hard. The EX version does 120 though. Now, this move is gonna be punishable on block for the light and the hard versions. Check the check the one guard jump on this. Kenso jumps really early. This is on the light one. Kenso jumps really early. On the hard one, jumps even earlier. Whee! Ugh, terrible. So on block, you don't you don't really want to use this by itself. If you say go into a string like this. Let's assume he's blocking it here. Let's say you go into an overhead and you go into your stuff. Don't cancel to the punch. If you cancel to the punch, you're liable to get punished. Not to mention, you have lots of other cool options that you can do off of that that aren't necessarily that quarterback punch. It's mostly for combos, but there is the exception and that is the EX version. Check the one guard jump on this. Now it's actually really tough to see because we're using I'm using different characters and remember that different characters have different jump heights, different run speeds, a couple different things. It seems like we jump at almost the same time, right? Well, you're more or less right. This move is minus one on block. Kenso jumps 1 60th of a second before I do. 1 60th, okay? It's easier to see if you use the same character. This move is so good. You can almost use it twice in a row every time you want to use it. If your opponent blocks this, uh, they pretty much don't have a punish for it unless they have a long range one frame command grab. So with that said, if your opponent is rushing you down, this is a really good wake up option. This is fully invincible to lows and highs, okay, and throws. There's uh, this move is completely invincible and costs a bar, and it's only minus one on block. Whew. It's one of the better reversals in the game for that combination of properties. If your opponent doesn't make it whiff, there is not a whole lot they can do about it. And even if they do make it whiff, it recovers way faster than the regular one. Actually, that's not correct. Okay. It actually, when, you, when it whiffs, it has about the same recovery. But the thing is, when they actually block this, it's really annoying to deal with. Uh, once in a while, if they block this, throw another one out. If they try to poke, they'll get hit by that one. There's lots that you can do with this to be tricky, okay? This is sort of that situation where I can't believe I blocked their uppercut and then got hit by another uppercut. It's like that. If you've ever played Third Strike, this is your move. <laughs> okay. 
Next special move, down forward light kick. It's, it's only down forward light kick, so you might wonder why isn't it in the command normal list? The reason is because you can EX it. Because you can EX it, the game lists it as a special move. There's another example of this with dual lawn. Now, by itself, it's not that great. If you just like, if you're just standing here and you poke with it, your opponent is going to jump before you do. Um, your opponent is going to have frame advantage in this scenario. You don't really want to throw this out by itself. Okay, it has decent range on it, but then again, so does your hard kick, so does your standing CD, so does your hopping attacks. You know, it really doesn't have a lot of th great things going for it as its own poke. But what you can do with it, it does have a second kick. You'll notice on the special move list it says down forward light kick and then there's a dot and then there's another light kick. What this means is if you hit light kick again, he does a second kick. One, two. Okay, so he does a second kick and this does combo from the first. Oops. It combos from the first and you can combo afterwards. Just for an example. Oops. It combos for the first, and you can combo afterwards. One of his most basic combo enders is to go into the double kicks and then go into a hard punch. For example. So what's going on here is you can actually, because it's a special, you can cancel into it much the same as you would with lots of special moves. You can do it from most of your normals. Okay, and because you can do it from most of your normals, that means that after most of your normals, you can end up in kick stance right next to your opponent and in a juggle state. This grants lots of interesting combos and has lots of interesting ways for you to continue your offense. Now, you don't want to do the double kick on block either, though. If they actually block both of these kicks on the ground, you are going to get punished if they know what's going on. So don't do both. Honestly, you don't want to do this on block except in specific situations. Okay? This is more of a combo tool most of the time. Now, you can EX it. So you might say, well, Juice, why would you do the EX version? The reason you would want to do the EX version is because it's not as terrible on block, but the primary reason is because it's really, really, really great in combos. It knocks them really high. Okay, it knocks them high enough that you get way greater combo potential. Oh, miss. Okay, when you knock them higher with that, in fact, a lot of his best one bar, one drive combos this is what you spend the one bar on, okay? You're gonna see it used a lot if you watch a high level match footage of Chin players. Let's see. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that move a lot more when we get to the combo section. All right, so next. Um, the next two moves I've actually already covered when I was in the punch stance, no need to go over them again. Next we have the bottom two. We have the drinking. Gulp, 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 gulp. I'm done, son. Okay. This special move does a couple of things. Really, it only does two. Well, it does three, excuse me. I want you to notice here that my close hard punch does 70. Here comes another math lesson. With the drink, it does seven more. With another drink, it does seven more. Seven more. Seven more. Seven more. This is a factor of 10% per drink. His throw does 100 damage. Plus 10% with one drink. Plus 50% with five drinks, okay? Ev all the damage that he deals when he has a drink in him is increased by that many tens of a percent, okay? 10% per drink. It's not really that hard. You can do the math and try to figure... If you have a combo that does, say, 200 damage, it'll do 300. Oh, excuse me. It'll do 300 if he has five drinks in him, etc., etc. Now, the drinks do not go away with time, but they do go away if you get knocked down. 
I want you to notice that I have one drink here. You can actually see, if you're not aware, look where Chin is crouching right here. Right underneath him, there's actually a little meter right next to your stocks that tells you how many drinks you have. But when you get knocked down, you lose a drink. You lose a drink every single time you get knocked down. That's pretty much all there is to drinking. You gain damage and you lose one when you knock down. Okay? If Now you'll notice, you've probably noticed by now, that Chin has one of the slowest run speeds in the game. He has one of the shortest range hyper hops in the game and super jumps as well. He doesn't cover space very well. But he does have a really, really good parry and he does have really good defensive moves, okay? So what the drink can be good for is goading your opponent. If you're over here and your friend's like, eh, I want to get in, but I don't want to approach you too much because I'm scared of parry and I'm scared of this stuff. If they're scared of that stuff, take the opportunity to drink. If they're just going to stay over there, give yourself that free damage bonus. Remember, until you get knocked down, you don't lose those drinks. So if you have a defensive advantage, drink, drink, drink. Ah, gain that power. It'll be useful later in the match when you finally do get to close range. One more thing, look at my meter. The drink actually builds meter, but it continues to build meter even if you have all five drinks. So even if you do have all five drinks, it's still a good idea to drink once in a while because you can build meter off of it. You can still use it for the same purpose of annoying your opponent and continuing to build meter. Whee! Okay. Now, in addition, and I'll get to it when I get there, he does have a super that you have to have a drink to access. But I'll be at the supers in just a moment. Now, his next special move is one that you've probably seen a lot. This is the roll. The Kai Ten Keki Ku Totsuken. Half circle forward and a kick. He rolls towards you and covers a lot more distance than he would by running, okay? This covers about a half screen distance here. The hard kick version goes a little bit further than half screen. It goes about three quarters of the screen. Think Chin can't poke you over here? Think again. He can absolutely reach you with this. Okay? Now I want to go over the meterless versions first. The meterless versions, if you do them on their own, they are going to be unsafe. Your opponent is going to recover before you. However, they're not really unsafe because you can do what some players call a free cancel. When this move connects, the light kick or the hard kick or even the EX version, when it does connect, you can cancel it into what? The special moves. You can cancel it into a parry, into a back, into a, a back fist, into the up kick. Woo! Okay. You cannot cancel it into his overhead or into his stances. But you can cancel it into those three special moves. Okay, so yeah, you can think about, say, you know, the quarterback punch isn't safe on block. We already went over that. But you could try to cancel it into the up kick to create a situation where, you know, your opponent has to deal with the situation now. You could try, for example, let's say you had a bar and you roll at them and you do this. You could then EX backfist if they try to escape that situation, because they do have to block both of these. Okay, so despite the fact that you're probably going to be negative on block, if you're far away from your opponent, you can still use this to get close to your opponent and see how they react to the situation, because you absolutely have choices that you can do there. Okay, now I need to talk about the hard kick version in particular here. This is the reason I picked Kenso. The hard kick version of this roll goes under projectiles. Now when I say it goes under, that means it does not go under the projectiles that skate along the ground. Terry, Kyo, Iori, and Joe have projectiles that skate along the ground and this does not go past that. Because he's not projectile invincible, he's just so low to the ground that it misses. Okay? And 
I just want to demonstrate that he's not projectile invincible here. Notice I'm putting that projectile right on top of him as he gets up. I just want to point out that if I try to do the special move on Wake Up, it doesn't work, and it doesn't go under the projectile. It doesn't have projectile invincibility. What it is, is after the startup has happened, you're low enough to the ground that it goes under most of the flying projectiles. Only those four characters have a grounded projectile, and you cannot use the hard kick roll to get past those. So, King giving you trouble, Kenso giving you trouble, Psycho Ball giving you trouble, roll under it. That'll give you an idea, and it works 75% of the screen away. Chutodaya! Okay, so you can you can often punish a projectile from way farther than it seems. Whee! Oh, gotta be a little closer. Oh, I'm not even doing it right. All right. Oh, well. hopefully you understand the point. <laughs> you can absolutely get something off of the, the roll if you counter a projectile. And of course, if it hits, because it is free cancelable, you get combos. Okay, probably the most basic thing you can do if it does hit is combo to the down forward light kick, and then go into standard down forward light kick options. You can do one, then go into the double kick. Okay, or you could finish with a with back slap. See, what else can you do? Uh, let's see. Well, that costs a drive meter. You have some choices, and I'll go over what the really effective ones are in the combo section. And, last but not least, EX version. This move... This move makes me hate Chin, and it'll make you hate Chin too, if you're good at the game. Now, here's what's going on. I want to get this out of the way first. I want to start by saying, it is not invincible on startup. Counter hit. It's not invincible on startup. Oops. It's neither high invincible nor low invincible on startup. I was trying to throw that. I'm pretty sure it's 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 not throw invincible, but I don't have a good test for that right now. Hopefully somebody will correct me. Is that throw invincible on startup? Now, the on startup is important here because I want to show you something. Let's see here. What's the best way to do this? Break it down, Kenso. Ah. Alright, so, why am I doing this? Because I want to show you that the EX roll has invincibility after the startup. You cannot hit Chin. You can't. You can't hit him. Not high, not low. You can't throw him. You can't do anything after the startup of the EX roll. He is fully invincible during, not at the beginning, but during the EX roll all the way to the end. You absolutely cannot do anything about that EX roll once it has fully started up. And you might say, well, it seems really good, so what about on block? On block, this is exactly the same. <laughs> on block, it's exactly the same as the EX slab. He's only minus one. So if you block this, he has the opportunity to mix you up and still be in your face. Just like with the regular versions, he can cancel the punch into things. But if he doesn't cancel into anything, he's still only minus one. And he has lots of choices. Ugh, excuse me. 
Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that because it is fully invincible after it started up, like the hard kick roll here doesn't go under the super, right? I'm doing the hard kick roll before the super, and I can't roll under that one, because again, he's not projectile invincible on the hard one, he's just under it. But the EX version... The EX version is fully invincible <laughs> during the travel. So, if there is a projectile that the hard kick version of the roll doesn't get around, the EX version absolutely does. So, if you thought Kyo, Iori, Terry, and Joe might be good against Chin because they have that ground projectile that he can't get under, think again. He can still blow it up for a bar. Okay? You blow it up for a bar, it does good damage, and what do you get when it hits? It does 120, and you can easily combo it into the light kick roll. All you have to do is do nothing afterwards, do the light kick roll, and then you go into your normal combo options. The EX roll is where most of your EX meter is going to go, assuming you emulate the style of top level tournament players. Okay. Next, we have the super that is titled Toku Hiten Ho. <laughs> um, I just call it the twist. Come on, baby. Well, let's do the twist. Now, when you do it really, really close to your opponent, uh, the light punch and the hard punch version are the same. You'll notice it does 210 damage and does 7 hits. Um, I want to point out that if you're at standing at a particular range, it can do 8 hits and get an extra hit for an extra 30 damage. But most of the time when you combo into this, you're only going to get the 7 hits. Okay? The EX version is going to grant you 16 hits and is going to do 320. Notice that all 16 hits do the same damage. Awesome. Unfortunately, the level 1 super is not invincible on startup, but the level 2 one is. Let's try upper body. Ow, it gets slapped. Okay, the EX version is really fast, and it also travels um, the full screen. Woo! <laughs> so because of this, this actually works as a makeshift, the level 2 version in particular, this kind of works as a makeshift anti-air. The level 1 is too low, but... If you're far away from your opponent, and they super jump at you, you can, you can still get most of the hits by throwing the level 2 super out, and so despite the fact that he has short range and short movement, he's still got this which reaches over half the screen, and this super... Surprisingly, works as a good anti-air if you actually see it and you want to blow the bars on it. As I said, his EX moves are very good, and so that's where most of your meter's gonna go. But, level 2 super ain't a bad way to finish around if they make a careless jump. Okay, it's a pretty decent combo ender, but Chin usually capitalizes on his reset mix-ups um, more often than, say, just comboing into a super. Most of the combos with Chin, you can cancel with an overhead or a fake overhead at the end of it. And that's what you're going to do most of the time and where you're going to get your best mix-ups from. But you absolutely could if you wanted. No, not like that. Let's see here. You absolutely could if you wanted do some stance cancels and cancel the last normal into the super if you want to finish the round quickly. But oftentimes his resets are going to get him good opportunities, build him a lot of meter, and that's where you want to do most of the time. Okay. Now he has one more super that you don't have access to unless you have a drink. It's quarterback, and then forward and a punch. If you don't have a drink, you can't do it. Whee! It's the shoulder. The shoulder check. Now, 
Because you don't have access to it until you have a drink, this is the lowest damage it can do is 242. Now this is the Light Punch version. I want you to notice something here. The Light Punch version moves him forward about a quarter of the screen and does 242, and it just knocks down right away. But look at the Hard Punch version. The Hard Punch version is a little bit slower on startup, but it has about the same reach. Why is this important? It's important because... The Hard Punch version actually does less damage, but it wall bounces. And because it wall bounces, you can create lots of really interesting combos with it, if you can combo into it, okay? If you would like to see more of that super and more of the wall bounce capabilities, please uh, consult with Trial Mode. Trial Mode does have you attempt one of the wall bounce combos. However, the Light Punch version of this super is not invincible on startup. Wah! But the Hard Punch version is. If your opponent's mashing low B, wah! Hit him with it. It's gonna work, okay? It's really slow, but there are a lot of slow reversals that can work. A good example, Takuma's um, Ranvu Super, Mature, that, that kick super where she grabs you and drags you to the wall. You can make a slow super work. And the way to make a slow super work is as a well-timed anti-air. Boom! Here we go. And you can get combos off of that. It puts them in a full juggle state that you can take advantage of. So if you can actually anti-air with this, you can get really, really big combos if you're at that level of skill where you can anti air on reaction with the super. It's something that's worth trying and practicing. It's probably, it's something I haven't seen a whole lot of in high level play, but it's something else you could try with the character. Okay? Also, if you do have a drink, that does more damage than the super. Okay? This is 242, and the level 1 twist does 231. So if you have one bar and you want to combo to a super, you want to do the light punch version of the shoulder, this is going to do a little bit more damage than the twist. Okay. Okay, and last but not least, we have his Neomax. This move's weird. Um, first and foremost, what you should know is you can do it you can do it in the air, or you can do it on the ground. Anywhere you're, anywhere you are, you can do this. And once the Neomax has started, you can spit the fire in any of the eight directions. Okay. Now, in my HD combo, it's good to use it for two bars. But outside of HD, it's not really a consistent. There's not really a lot of consistent ways to get all the hits. <laughs> and it's also just not that good on its own because. Unless you activate it right in your opponent's face and point it straight at them, there's no guarantee you're going to get all the hits unless you're right there. If you're just a little further away, they sort of fall out of it. Okay. Now, how to know if you actually did it right is all of the hits of the Neomax should equal 27. If you get 27 hits of the Neomax, that's when you're using it correctly. Okay. And there's actually a really, really cool combo like this. You can, because you can use it in the air, you can max cancel it from the level 2, and there's some cool combos that you can, there's a, that's a cool way to finish your HD. But honestly, by itself, it ain't that great. You could try anti-airing with it if you're feeling ballsy. <laughs> Except, they would fall out of it. <laughs> Yeah, they would probably fall out of it. There's probably some more testing. Maybe there is a good anti-air setup. Maybe there's more to the move than meets the eye. But um, as it is, I haven't seen a lot of high-level players utilize this outside of combos, and so I'm only going to suggest you use it in HD combos as an ender, and I'll show you how to do it with my combo. So, Chin is a complicated character. He's got a drink super that a lot of people haven't seen. A lot of people didn't know he can use his Neomax in the air. Twist Super mm, isn't as good as Resets. 
His throw is really good in the corner. He's got these stances with all these options. And he's got these special moves that he can go into from his normals and from his stances and back into his normals and back into his stances and they loop around each other. And he's got this really, really cool mix-up game. Once you know all of that, then you can start playing the character really well. And that's why Chin is complicated, okay? But let me just go over more of his general strategy. When you are in the neutral game, you want to utilize his parry, his hopping CD, his standing hard punch, and his standing CD in order to, to protect the space in front of you, to pr prevent yourself from getting jumped in on. Remember, parry is here, okay? Jumping CD is a great air-to-air -air and great way to anti-air people as well. Jump CD, stand CD, standing C, especially if you quick cancel it. If you watch Fox play, every time he hits a standing hard punch, he does this. Why? Because if it hits, great. If it doesn't, recover faster. Don't let that hard punch just linger out there. Stance cancel it. Woo! <laughs> anyway. Those are the moves that you want to be using the most in the neutral game, especially if your opponent is being offensive. Parry, hop CD, standing CD, and standing hard punch, especially stance canceled, okay? Defend yourself, gain ground, okay? Or, if you don't want to move forward, if you don't want to defend yourself that way, another thing you could do is just back up and drink, and back up and drink. If your opponent is content to stay past 50% of the screen against you, then not only can you threaten with a roll if you really want it, and not only can you kind of make it safe by going to the down forward kick or into a parry, not only do you have those options, but you can just sit there and build some meter and say, I dare you to get over here. I dare you. Obviously, some characters can try to reaction super that. It happened at EVO, okay? Don't drink against people that have good reaction time, especially if they have a character that has long range. But if they don't have long range, you can absolutely try to bait them to come towards you by doing things like this, okay? Make sure you adapt to your opponent and make sure you have an idea. Is he waiting for me to drink? If so, don't do it. Run forward and try a standing C, try a standing CD, hop forward with a CD. But if he's not waiting for it, go for that drink, get that extra damage. Remember, it doesn't go away until you get knocked down. So any drinks you can get in there before you get to the close range again will be beneficial. Okay? Once you have bars, and you will get bars... As I said, the rolls you can make kind of sort of safe by canceling into special moves and parries and such. The EX roll is a really, really, really good thing to do randomly, okay? Now, random is a word that for some people they don't like. Other people are like, hey, I like playing random, okay? EX roll is only minus one on block, and on hits, you get, you get like a full combo and you get a great corner carry, okay? When your back is to the wall, look how far you can take him with this. You can take your opponent two-thirds of the screen every single time you hit them with an EX roll. Okay? If you hit them with it, you get good damage, you get the mix-up that you always want, which is that reset into the overhead of the overhead fake, and you push them really far. Why wouldn't you want that? It's really, really great to hit with. But Juice, why would I just throw it out? I'll tell you why. Because it's invincible during the travel. If they throw a projectile, if they hit any button that's kind of slow on recovery, if they do anything that doesn't involve them being off the ground, this could catch. And you get them all the way to the corner. You get your sick mix-up game going. And if they block it, so what? You're minus one. And now you're in. You're in with Chin. A character who has more close range options than pretty much every character in the game. Okay? If you're minus one and your opponent's face with Chin, you could EX slap him. You could EX roll again. <laughs> you could go for hard punches. You could go for stance cancels, crouch and light kick, maintain the offensive advantage, and maintain your spacing. Overhead fake, go! If you land that EX roll, you get something great. If it's blocked, you get something great. The only thing your opponent can do to reliably counter it is to make it whiff. If they don't make it whiff, it's, there's not a lot they can do against it. This is a move that really separates Chin from other characters, and it's a move that's where most of your meter's gonna go. When you are defending yourself with CD, C, jumping CD, 
parry, drinks and such. Throw this out once in a blue moon. You'd be surprised how often it works, and if it doesn't work and they block it, it still kind of worked. So EX Roll is your trump card, and you'll want to use it. It's up to your style to decide how often and how liberal you want to be with it. If you like using it a lot, put Chin on Anchor. Give him four bars to start, throw it out. You're going to win a lot of matches. Watch Reynald. How often does Reynald just go, I'm going to EX Roll. I'm going to EX Roll. Yeah, I'm going to EX Roll. He doesn't do it just to be random. He does it because he's going to end up on the best scenario 99% of the time unless they make it whiff. Are you willing to be jumping up and down against Chin all day, especially with his godlike jump CD? Especially if you're just jumping up and down over there that he could just be drinking? Chin makes you want to take action. And when they take action, hit it with an EX roll. Or a hard kick roll, that'll work too, but that's not invincible, so you have to use that more sparingly. Okay. Let's see. Um, one last note I want to mention about his neutral game is... Um, his down forward light kick actually can have frame advantage on it, and really good frame advantage that you can actually guarantee. Let's see here. Okay. Doesn't work on Kenso. Okay. So what I was gonna get at is if you do this if you do this string in particular, hard punch and then kick stance and then hard punch again. Looks like this doesn't work on Kenso, but if you do this quickly enough, you can absolutely get to your opponent and they have to block all three of those attacks. This may be character specific, it obviously doesn't work on Kenso, but it does work on other characters, and when this does work, you have frame advantage on that particular attack. I'll use it on another chin just so you can see. Okay. Notice, I'm the chin on the left, he's the chin on the right, and he is set to one guard jump. If it is possible for him to jump out of this block stun, then he will do it. Against some characters, you can utilize this string and have frame advantage right in your opponent's face with a hard punch ready to go. Okay, so, right here, if you can get this frame advantage, and this works on a lot of characters, then if you hit that hard punch again, boom! You will catch the pre-jump frames if they try to jump, and because you have frame advantage, if they try to poke, there's a good chance you'll beat things with that too. This is a simple setup that you can do against a lot of characters that gives you frame advantage and can lead into a lot of combos, especially if you stance cancel it again. So, when it comes to Chin, it's really important that you know your ranges, but it's the rolls that are your trump card, in particular the EX one. It's the standing hard punch, the standing CD, and the jumping CD that help occupy your space, and it's being able to parry jump-ins and parry in general, like on Wake Up. Those are going to be the things that separate the good Chins from the not good Chins, and the players who understand those things about Chin will be able to fight against Chin. So that's like Chin in a nutshell. Now let me get into his combos. I want to start with, what if you parry something? If you parry something, okay, the simple middleless combo that you can pretty much always do is you can do a light kick roll. As soon as it hits, go to the down forward light kick. And when you land in the kick stance, hit close hard punch, okay? Remember that even if you're not in the close range, hard punch is going to give you the close hard punch.
If you cancel that into the overhead fake, you can land before your opponent and then get your momentum. Okay, and then you can go into your offense from there. Okay? It, what, what if you land the kick parry? Well, the answer is exactly the same. Okay, make sure you actually cancel the kick parry. When you do the, excuse me, when you do the light kick parry and you parry them high, you usually have to wait like a certain amount of time in order to land the light kick roll, and it'll vary depending on the height of your opponent. Whereas on the hard kick parry, you want to make sure you're canceling it into the light roll as soon as possible. That'll be the way to guarantee the attack. So again, you get the exact same setup, exact same offense. If you want to spend a bar and a drive, you can. Whoop. Again, it ends with hard punch into the into the setup. Let me show you that from the other side, just to show you that it works most of the screen. Light kick one? Light kick one. Okay. So if you do do this, you can use the EX kicks to get more damage, more carry. Okay? And if you time that right, you can get another light roll there. This is going to be finicky depending on spacing. There we go. I got one. So you can finish that if you practice enough. <laughs> Obviously, I have not. Boom! And there we go again, into the same scenario. Keep in mind, with these one-bar, one-drive combos that Chin does in particular, from the roll into the EX kick, those give him an excellent corner carry from anywhere on the screen. So if you land a parry, those are some cool combo options. Now you might say, well, Juice, what if I land a close hard punch? Well... The best damage is going to come from a stance cancel. Okay? But if you know you're going to land a hard punch, like say they miss an uppercut or something, what you want to end up doing is going into the down forward light kick. You could just do hard punch into down forward light kick, and then again with the reset shenanigans, or do a stance cancel for more damage. 213. Now I want to know. I want you to notice here. You might say, well, isn't the slap going to do more damage? Isn't that a better combo ender? Actually, no. Notice that the slap only does 60, hard punch does 70, it actually does more damage. So, this 213 is going to do more damage and get you more opportunity than knocking them away with the slap. You shouldn't combo into the slap unless you want to drive cancel it. If you want to drive cancel it, then hey, be my guest. Especially if you want that corner carry. hey -o. Even with your back to the corner. Oh, look at that. With your back to the corner for one bar, one drive, you can carry them all the way. But again, it's going to be timing and spacing specific. Ah, oh, darn it. Again, the same scenario in the corner with the same mix-up. Everything, every combo he gets, he can go whoop and put you in that same situation. Okay? So, you got a close C combo? Well, what if I get a crouching B or a standing A? Well, <laughs> here's what you can do. Same situation. Any one of his A or B attacks, you can cancel into his down forward light kick. Same situation. And if you want, and if you do hit them with the down forward light kick, and you do want to go into more damage, 
guess what you can do? It'll look very familiar. Same scenario. Get a crouching light kick with my back to the corner. I don't care. I'm taking you to the wall. I hate you. Get in the wall. <laughs> you can always take them full screen with Chin if you want to spend a bar and a drive. That's one of his major strengths. Okay? So crouching B, take him to the corner if you spend the meter. Close C, take him to the corner if you spend the meter. Parry, take him to the corner if you spend the meter. And you don't have to spend that meter, and you could just, you know, reset. And go into more uh, options. What about the overhead, Juice? What if I land the overhead? Well, when you land the overhead, I'm gonna give you one of the simpler combos you can do. Okay? Well, this is this is a good damage. This is a good damage that isn't terribly, terribly tough. This will take about a day or two of practice before you get down, though. Same scenario. Okay? Here's what's gonna happen. After you land the overhead, you're gonna do the punch, and it's gonna combo if you time it right. Just like I showed you in the punch stance section, you're gonna cancel it to the stance, and then back into the punch special move, and you're gonna do this three times. But then, when that third punch stance connects, you want to down down both kicks to go into the kick stance and quickly cancel. This allows you to land a far hard punch, and that far hard punch goes into, whoop, the light kick, and the rest you already know. So let's say I land an overhead with my back to the corner. Oops, dropped it. Whoop. You can do it again. Okay? You don't have to spend the bar on the drive, but if you do, hey, they get to the corner and you get to put them in the prime mix-up scenario. Okay? So you've seen all these combos where I take him to the corner. And remember how I said his normal throw gets combos in the corner? Well, let me give you some corner throw combos. If you just have a bar, go ahead and go into the twist super, you get 296. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, there's not enough time for you to combo the shoulder super. Okay? Not possible, and the hard punch version is too slow. So if you just want to spend a bar, you have to use the twist super there. Okay? Now, what if you just have a drive? It's just for... If all you have is a drive, you can still get some good damage. Same scenario. Once you land that throw, you put them right back in that scenario where if they block, they're gonna get thrown. What if you have a bar and a drive? Here we go. Same scenario, 472 for a bar and a drive off of a throw in the corner. Now off oftentimes you'll see that combo being done. Okay, um, if you're missing that hard punch, you're missing the timing or you're doing too many down forward light kicks. There we go. Now, if you do want to spend two bars on this, there's honestly not a whole lot of different scenarios here. If you could spend the drive and you could go into more EX up kicks. Um, but if you if you don't want to spend two bars and a drive, then your best option is honestly just EX twist super. You do get all 16 hits of it, so 400 just for getting that throw in the corner. But if you have a drive. You could do that if you wanted. Honestly, I would just spend the one bar, one drive, and save the other bar. You know, one bar, one drive is usually all that I see top level chin players spend in the corner. And that's because this combo is so good, and it puts you in that corner scenario. Now, I want to show you something here. If you've been paying attention, you've probably noticed that all of these combos, any of them, if I land any random hit, I could spend a bar and a drive and take them to the corner. So what happens after that? I'll tell you what happens. If you land a throw, or an overhead, or a C, or a light kick or a jab, 
or an EX roll, you get the exact same combo again if you still have meter to go. So, let's take a regular combo here. Remember how I said that EX roll is invincible after the startup? I want you to envision yourself in this scenario here. Right here. If you block here for too long, guess what happens? Oh, block and go. I get the combo, right? I get this combo. Sucks for you. But I don't want to get hit, so get thrown again. If you get thrown, I get this combo. So maybe you'll say, I don't want to get thrown this time. I'm going to try to tech that throw. Guess what happens? This EX roll is going to blow your throw attempt up because I'm throw invincible at this point. And you're going to get a close C. And you're going to get a close C. And I get to hit you with EX roll. And then I get what? I get the same combo. Don't hit a button to tech that throw or the EX roll will beat it. But, but... I have to hit a button, otherwise the throw EX roll is really, really good. Yes, that's true. What you can do if you're worried about the throw EX roll mix-up is when you're the opposite chin player, jump out of it, okay? Because I'm using two chins, I can show you the scenario here. Okay, if you find yourself eating this combo, If you jump, the EX roll will miss and you might have an opportunity to punish. Now, what if he doesn't do the EX roll? What if he goes for throw? If he goes for throw, remember there's that extra period of throw invincibility when you're coming down from the air after a combo or from a block stun. So what's gonna happen if you jump, is he's going to miss with his close C or his close D. So you can avoid the throw and the overhead by jumping, but that's risky. Why is it risky? Because, what if you go for this? So say he comboed you in the corner. Say he comboed you. And you actually try to jump? Let's see here. He could just hit you during those pre-jump frames. If he doesn't go for the overhead or the throw, he could go for some jabs. And if he gets those jabs, he gets the same combo again. And if he lands a close C, he gets the same combo again. And if for whatever reason you're blocking low, guess what happens? He gets to do it again. This is what the high level chin gameplay comes down to. You take them to the corner, you put them in any combo, any combo you want that goes to down forward light kick. You reset them and then you mix up between throw, attacks, overhead, and EX roll. It's almost impossible to beat every single one of those options. In fact, you cannot beat EX roll, it's not possible. You can't hit it until after the active frames. So, this is what makes chin scary. This is what makes Chin really annoying, and this is why you want to play Chin. Anytime he taps you, you spend meter, they're in the corner. And now that they're in the corner, you can do whatever you want, and it's a good mix-up. Chin is super scary and is, in my opinion, a top 10 character in the game. Pretty sure lots of other good players consider him top 10 as well. But utilizing this particular corner mix-up, knowing how to combo into his corner carries from various options, and under utilizing his resets, into his mix-up game is what makes him great. And it's why you should play the character. It takes a lot of work and a lot of practice, but once you get there, he's one of the best characters in the game. So last but not least, let me show you the HD combo that I recommend. This combo works anywhere on the screen as long as your back isn't completely in the corner. Even if you're a step out, this will work. Let me show it to you in the corner first. And this is a two bar HD combo, by the way. Let me show it to you in the corner, and then I will show it to you wall to wall. Twenty seven nits. Nope. 
Did I, did I drop it? I did drop it. Yeah, my bad. I might drop this combo once or twice. It took a lot of practice. 27. Oh, darn. So you can land, actually, a light roll after that if you're really good. I did 929 damage off of a close hard punch for two bars. And in fact, I didn't even finish it right. Ah! Gar! <laughs> I'll get this, don't worry. Hopefully by now you understand the basic combo structure. 43. So the point is, I'm going to do this, one, do one kick, and then do the double kick, and then close hard punch into that reset. Bam! Whew! 933 for two bars off of a close hard punch. And then what happens? The reset. What if they block? Dead. <laughs> Everyone's got a thousand life. What if they block low? Dead. What if they don't block? Hit them with a jab. Dead. Dead. Kill them. Two bars, you can kill them. Now, even if you're going off of crouching light kicks and such, you can still get this combo relatively easily. You don't necessarily need to use the stance into the kick, but that's a good way to maximize the damage. Even if you do it off crouch B, crouch A, crouch B, this string right here, you still get 787 and again, the carry. Let me just show you that this works from most of the screen here. Puta! So, now I want you to notice here, if you do it with your back to the corner, this can work, but it requires a lot of timing variation on your part. gonna happen around here. The light slap in the middle of the second series whiffs because they you combo them too high due to the distance between you. You have to do a certain amount of waiting to get this combo to this exact same combo as written. It takes a little bit of waiting to get this combo to work full screen, but if you wait, then the light roll at the end, which cancels to the C slap into the Neomax, that might not work. That requires a very particularly timed down forward light kick to work. So if your back is in the corner, I don't recommend doing that HD, but it works almost anywhere else on the screen. And if you have three bars, you can turn it into a kill. And the fun thing about the three bar HD is you don't even have to do anything different. $9.99! It's not a kill per se, but it's a kill. <laughs> it's probably a kill. Just parry something, and he's dead. If you have the level 2, if you have 4 bars, let out the level 4 twister. Guarantee that kill. But seriously, for 3 bars, it's probably gonna kill. Add a jump in, and it kills. Really not much more to chin than that. There's other HD combos you can experiment with. There's other, there's, um, let's see, in particular, like the Max Cancel from the Twist Super to the Drink. There's some cool combo ideas in his trial mode if you want to give that a try. But before I leave you, I just want you to remember something. All of the combos that I showed you here are without any drinks whatsoever.
dropped it. If he has any amount of alcohol in him, you can absolutely kill with his 2 and 3 bar HD combos if you actually hit them correctly. Chin with drinks in him is no longer just good at damage, he becomes a damage ridiculous tank. And it's just something that I want to leave you with. Chin's damage without drinks is already good, it's already above average. You add drinks, that is all bonus damage. If you have 5 drinks in you, the most simple combo can do ridiculous damage. How's about 665 plus a reset for a bar and a drive? It's not often you're going to get to 5 drinks unless your opponents are really, really passive, but Chin can really pile it on. Okay, That is going to be my last thought that I leave you with. Um, I'm done with Chin. For my next video, um, I might do Daimon, uh, Duelon is really popular, I might do Duelon, I might do Joe, those are some characters I want to do some more studying on. I absolutely do want to finish all the characters, so thank you very much if you've been watching them all, thank you, I appreciate any feedback you might have, comment, YouTube, please. Um, but I also might want to do some mechanics videos, and I might throw them, I might sprinkle them in between the character videos. But um, thanks so much for watching. Um, Visit my stream sometimes if you have the chance, and uh, I hope you do pick up Chin, because Chin is crazy. Anyways, guys, I'll see you later.